After that introduction, I can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, but I will make you the promise that Henry VIII made to all his wives, so I won't keep you long. <laughs> um, I was a bit disappointed before lunch, you know, because for many years uh, I was widely known in the industry as Drayton fucking bird. <laughs> um, but I've, after listening to Pete, I resigned this honour. <laughs> Bit of a cunt, though, isn't he? Um, <laughs> would you like to see if I can make all this shit work? Um, would you like to see a, a little clip of David Ogilvy? Uh, he was a bit younger than me when he made this, but uh, it's quite good. I hope. Has Drayton? Is Drayton on the programme? Drayton Bird to come and talk to you. Has he done it yet? What? Yes, he Pierre is one of the ablest men in our outfit. And I just say this to you. Uh, you have a lot to learn from our direct people. Because, you see, they really know what happens when advertising runs. And the rest of these people have the faintest idea. They fire off a campaign and you say, well, is it a successful campaign? And they say, well, it's a little too early to tell. That means no. <laughs> <laughs> But then a year later, the sales had gone up, so they said, you're damn right it was a successful campaign. Look at the sales. They don't know whether it's the advertising or not. Maybe they have tracking studies. They got there. But these direct response people, they know to a penny what the results are, and they're realists. One thing in your pursuit of new business, don't go around making, new, making speeches. It's a complete waste of time. My only quarrel with Drake and Bird, he's always swanning off to make speeches. <laughs> He actually rang me up one day and he said, just back from making another speech, are we then? <laughs> um, I'm 80, I was 80 uh, a few weeks ago, and um, somebody very kindly got together some of the leading people in uh, the advertising industry, marketing, whatever. Uh, does anyone know who the highest paid copywriter in the world is? Do you know who it is? He's a chap called Clayton Makepeace, and the last time I looked, he was making $300,000 a month. So one of the people that they got to talk, tell jokes about me, was Clayton. He's the only copywriter I know who is, has a distinction of being stabbed nearly to death by his own wife. <laughs> but once you get to know Drayton, you'll understand why. <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> It's all true. Um, I'd love to show you lots of PowerPoint slides, but I can't be fucking bothered. Um, and they're a pain in the ass because you never know whether you should be looking at the speaker or looking at the slides, you know. It's like a sort of visual schizophrenia. Uh, so what I'm going to do is a little talk to you um, based upon uh, something that Oscar Wilde said. Uh, he said, experience is the name we give to our mistakes. So I'm going to talk to you about mistakes uh, things you shouldn't do, uh, that people always do in this business. Um, the first thing that people nearly always do in this business is ignore the question all the customers ask. And that question is extremely simple. It is, why should I choose you? Most people in my, my clients in particular, so much right up their own arses that they're not forgetting where the bloody money comes from. So that's, that's the first thing to remember. Number one, why should I choose you? Number two, what can you do that nobody else can do? Or what can you do better than anyone else? Yeah? And by the way, before you go any further, if you write to me at the end of this, um, it's very easy. It's Drayton at DraytonBird.com. I will send you a copy of these slides. Okay? The next thing that people do uh, which is wrong, is they complicate things. Um, and there are only three things you have to think about if you wish to succeed. Nothing else. Number one, how can we get more customers? Number two, how can we get them to buy more? And number three, how can we keep them longer? There are no other ways to make more money. So if what you're planning to do doesn't involve at least one of them, don't do it. I know this is terribly simple, but 
it, it's not very complicated, this business. The next thing that people don't do is they don't try being a customer. Go and try and be a customer. Ring yourself up and be appalled. Ring your client up and be appalled by the load of shit you're at the other end of the phone. Yeah? Go in and see how people treat you. Yeah? Try and be a customer. Listen in on telephone calls. Yeah? See what happens. You'll be staggered. The next thing people do is they fail to measure the right things. They measure the wrong things. Clicks versus opens versus responses versus sales. Actually, what you really should be measuring is the kind of sales that, leave, that get you customers that have a good long-term value. The only reason Amazon is still in business is because the whole business model is based on the long-term value of a newly acquired customer. So you'll notice I'm not just talking about copy. If all you do is write copy, I promise you, you won't get very far. Yeah? You've got to understand the context in which you're operating. Yeah? How many people here have read Claude Hopkins' Scientific Advertising? <sighs> Less than 10% of you. God help you. David Ogilvy said, nobody should have anything to do with the business of advertising until they've read this book at least seven times. If you go to DraytonBird.com, the top right hand, you will see a little square. And on the little square, you can download scientific advertising, which is 48 pages long, written by the, the best man who ever operated in our business. Um, everything he said still applies today. Read it and reread it. I still read it. Every time I read it, I get an idea. Yeah? And that's the most valuable commodity on earth. This is a little bit of research that I love. It's from a, an organisation called the Fournay's Marketing Group, who measure the results of two and a half million, I'm sorry, two and a half billion advertising activities every year. And what they discovered in, 19, in 2014 was, number one, that 90% of marketers are not trained in marketing performance and ROI. ROI means return on investment. 67% don't believe marketing return on investment requires a financial outcome because they're all arseholes. Yeah? <laughs> and then he's pointed out, <coughs> they point out, every Tom, Dick and Harry is a marketer, lacking scientific and financial knowledge. So now you know why you spend much of your time dealing with fuckwits. Yeah? <laughs> you can't pick marketing up. Yeah? Next thing, please don't ignore the value of a customer. That's what you've got to think about. The next thing, never say no instead of why not. Yeah? The cheapest way to beat competition is a new idea. And that's why, what happens in this business, I'll tell you, is somebody comes up with some fancy new phrase, usually in America, for things that have been going on since the dawn of time. Right now it's disruption. That's just a fucking new idea. Yeah? <laughs> so never say no, just say why not, let's see what happens. Yeah? Nothing happens until something gets sold. That was a quotation from Thomas J. Watson Jr. of IBM. Nothing happens until something gets sold. Therefore, the next horrible sin is a failure to learn how to persuade. Yeah. Learn how to persuade, for God's sake. Don't just think I'm writing copy or this, that and the other. Study how people persuade other people to do what they want. Because you are going to spend your entire lifetime trying to persuade people to do what you want. Yeah? Maybe it's your partner, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's your colleagues. You're going to spend your life trying to persuade people to do what you want. Because otherwise you are going to be the fucky rather than the fuck all. Yeah? You're going to have a miserable life. Don't sell features before benefits. I don't know what it is, and people have already mentioned this. Uh, I want to know what it will do for me. Yeah. And that's possibly the most common mistake I see in copy, people talking about what it is rather than what it will do for people. 
There's a nice quotation from Winston Churchill, who was a remarkable man, though deeply unpleasant in many ways, and he said that courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Do you know the story about the guy who was, um, was it involved in the soft drinks business? Hmm? He, he, well, he started making soft drinks and he came up with a soft drink called One Up. Didn't do very well. Then he tried Two Up. That didn't do very well. <laughs> then he tried Three Up. That got distribution but didn't really walk out of the shops. Four Up, much the same. Five Up, a bloody disaster got really depressed, he tried six up, and then he said, fuck it, I'm giving up. He never knew how close he came. <laughs> so, big mistake, don't give up too soon, yeah? Either in copy or in follow-ups. Don't assume that because somebody didn't reply to this, they won't reply to the next, or the next, or the next, or the next. Keep following up. Uh, keep following up, keep asking for the sale. Otherwise you're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah? Don't assume that no replies means no interest. You don't know why somebody didn't reply. Maybe the dog had to go to the vet. Maybe they discovered their wife was maybe playing around with the guy next door. Whatever it was, don't assume no replies means no interest. Keep going until it doesn't pay to keep going. Yeah. The biggest mistake in, for those of you who eventually end in the hallowed halls of management, uh, the biggest mistake in management is failure to train. Uh, when I had the opportunity to sell my agency back in 1984, late 84, 85, uh, to eight of the top agencies in this country, uh, the one that I went for was the one that did the most training. Yeah. You can't do it all yourself. So training is incredibly important, and I congratulate you all for being here. Because yeah. the great thing about our business is that most of, most of the people in it know the square root of fuck all. Yeah? That gives you a tremendous advantage if you've got some vague idea of what it's all about. You're way ahead of most people. <coughs> There's a nice quote, actually, um, about how quickly training can have an impact. This is from a friend of mine called Rowan Gormley, who now runs Majestic Wines and founded Naked Wines, and before that co-founded Virgin Wines, Virgin Money, and Virgin Finance. And I did a uh, two hours training for them a while ago. And he just said, that was great. Everyone was really buzzed up when we left. 48 hours later, I got two good pieces of copy from people who'd never written before in their lives. Darling's cop copywriting is not that, it's not that difficult. You know, it's not bloody nuclear science, you know. It just takes a little modicum of talent, a bit of application, and a bit of learning. Yeah. It's not, you know. Please don't spend your time navel gazing about branding. Nobody gives a monkey's fuck about your brand. <laughs> Nobody wants to have a relationship with a brand. Nobody wants to fuck a brand or go to bed with a brand or kiss a brand. All they care is about their sweet little selves. So when people start talking about branding and our brand, leave the room quickly. <laughs> Ignoring the lessons of the past, which is the reason why I mentioned scientific advertising. I don't think I'm particularly talented, to be honest, but I'll tell you what, I'm bloody well read. And I've studied just about everything I can find on the subject of advertising and copy. Um, and most people are not good, not because they're not good, it's just because they haven't studied. Yeah. Fail to test. I, had a, I was looking at some stuff this morning from a client and he said, well, I don't like this. And I'm thinking, I don't really have a fuck whether you like it or not, you know, you're not the customer, you know. All this stuff about, you know, let's just test. I wrote back to my guy, tell the guy to test. You know, I have no idea whether he's right or wrong but tell him to test. Mark Twain said that to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And in the marketing industry, that generally means the hammer in question uh, is not a nail, it's actually, it's called advertising. When people think about marketing, they think about advertising. 
when Pete was talking this morning, he talked all the time about advertising. Well, advertising is fun. I actually worked with the guy who did the, one of those commercials you saw, them, the Smash commercials. I worked with him in 1971. Um, so here are the things that you really need to know if you want to succeed in this business. You need to understand research, you need to understand PR, you need to understand advertising, you need to understand point of sale, you need to, need to understand sales promotion, you need to understand direct and interactive marketing, you need to understand product placement, you need to understand word of mouth, you need to understand salespeople, you need to understand experiential, you need to understand pack design, you need to understand sponsorship, you need to understand workplace marketing, you need to understand cause related marketing, and you need to understand guerrilla marketing, because if you don't understand all those 12 things, you're not really professional. Yeah. But it's not hard. It really isn't hard. It's not hard. I'm not particularly bright, but I understand them. I'll give you a good example of guerrilla marketing. Uh, I have a daughter in New York, in fact I'm slightly hazy at the moment because I came back to, uh, from there just quite a couple of days ago from her launching a new little album. Um, and I used to go and visit her in Montclair, which is near New York, New York. And we were on the bus going to Montclair one day. And on the right-hand side, I saw a pole. Yeah? And on the pole was a little sign. And it said, we pay good prices for property. And above the sign that said, we pay good prices for property, was another little sign. And it said, we pay more than them. <laughs> That's what guerrilla marketing is about. It's about ambushing people, yeah? But seriously, all the things I've mentioned to you, they're not hard to understand. This is not, you know, people make a big meal about it. And when you understand something the next guy doesn't understand, you're in such a powerful position, yeah? It's a wonderful thing to sit in a meeting while everyone talks shit and at least know what the shit is and what it's all about and what it's not all about, yeah? So try and master all these things. Please never forget that repeat business pays best. <coughs> People are obsessed with getting new customers and new sales and this, that and the other. Repeat business always pays best. When you think about, if you're thinking of going to a restaurant after this, yeah, I can tell you that most of you will think of a restaurant you already know. It's always the same. Repeat business always pays. Yeah? But it's much more exciting to think of something new, isn't it? Yeah? It may be exciting, but it doesn't work. Please never forget that you are not the customer. Yeah? I've, I've spent, you know, 50 odd years at this game, nearly 60 years, 53 countries, and I can tell you that I can go into any room, anywhere in the world, where the marketers are having a meeting, and you will find there is no group less like their fucking customers than that lot. Because <laughs> they're all talking shit about strategy, and, you know, the brand, and customer, but, uh, Never forget you're not the customer. They're not interested in all this shit, you know. They've got real lives to live, yeah? Never forget where you came from. Yeah. I love watching people in supermarkets and places like that, watching what they do, you know. It's so easy to get sucked into this, an endless cycle of crap about strategy and bilge about that sort of stuff, you know. It's a simple business. It's not complicated. Don't make it complicated. The good example of that was uh, Sergio Zeman. Does anyone know who Sergio Zeman is? One person, okay. Sergio Zeman is the man who was given the job of launching new Coca-Cola uh, in the early 90s, which was the biggest marketing disaster just about ever, apart from the launch of the Edsel. And he expected to get fired. He wasn't fired. He was given a new job, and he was in charge of advertising and marketing. And how many people here have seen advertisements for Coca-Cola that feature polar bears? Yeah. Well, some of the ads that he actually commissioned back in the early 1990s are still running with polar bears. Yeah? When he showed those ads to his boss, who was a Cuban called Roberto Goethuesa, Sergio is Mexican, his boss said, I don't like the ads. And Sergio said, Roberto, if you promise to buy every bottle of Coca-Cola throughout the world for the next year, we'll run the as you like. Otherwise, if it's all right, we'll keep sticking it to the customers. Yeah? <laughs> D never ever, if you're a client, hire a dog and bark yourself. If you want to be a bloody copywriter, be a copywriter. But otherwise, let the dogs get on with it. Yeah? 
That's so common. I've had it today. I was, I was, a client sent something, you know. I think we should do so and so and so. And I'm thinking, if you were a fucking copywriter, you'd be working as a copywriter, wouldn't you, dear? You know, not sitting in your executive suite talking shit to each, week, each other all day. It drives me mad. Next, the biggest mistake I see uh, probably right now is a failure to correct names on your website. The website is only there for two things. Number one, to prove that you exist and are reasonably respectable. And number two, to collect names. That's it. Yeah? But most websites don't collect names well, if at all. Yeah? They, instead of having a free offer up top right where nobody can miss it, it's buried somewhere after people have lost interest. And you know that people only spend two seconds on the average website, so not. So that's another terrible sin. Next thing, make getting on your list hard, like the double opt-in. You know, either I want the fucking thing or I don't want the fucking thing. Don't ask me three times. Yeah? How many people here have read Don't Make Me Think? By Steve Crew. Fantastic book, you know. People don't want to think. They've got stuff to do. Yeah. And companies make it difficult. You know. If if you, you get you collect a lot of names and it turns out some of them are shit, first collect them and then sort out the ones that are shit. Don't lose them to start with by asking for a double opt-in. Yeah? Make it easy for people. Life's complicated enough as it is. Next thing, a failure to use incentives. Um, also, a failure to use really generous incentives. Uh, a dear friend of mine from whom I learnt a lot, I've worked with him in Manchester in the 1950s, once said, be as generous with your incentives as you possibly can. Yeah? Generally speaking, incentives pay. Use incentives and be, be good with them. And next, don't bury your incentives. Don't hide them at the bottom of the page where after people have stopped looking. You know, people are only going to look for two seconds. If they don't see that free offer, forget it. <laughs> next thing, big mistake, discounting all the time. If you discount all the time, what it's saying to people is, our product is not good enough to sell on its merits. This is one of the chief reasons why the big American car brands have been in terrible trouble, because they're always, always discounting you. Try and go for full price. And since you're writers, uh, a nice quote from Mr. Hemingway, the most essential gift for a good writer is the built-in shockproof bullshit detector. And you will never detect more bullshit than you will in the marketing business. Yeah? You really won't. People talk utter rubbish most of the time. They don't make it simple. They don't make it simple. So don't talk marketing bullshit. Yeah? Don't talk marketing bullshit. Words like optimising and so on, you know. All that stuff that sounds fantastic. Oh, we're not actually sort of making things. We're optimising. Well, fuck me, I'll go away and have a one. That's great. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they love it, you know, it makes them feel important. I remember when Viral came along, I thought, Viral, what's that? It's called Member Get a Member. We've had it for 50 or 60 years. You know. <laughs> Try and define things very simply so you really understand and everyone else understands. Good quote, <laughs> always occurs to me when I think about meetings, from John Updike. A healthy adult boar consumes each year one and a half times his own weight in other people's patients. So don't fall for the latest fashion like content. What the fuck were we doing? Did we have no content? <laughs> yeah? Of course we had content. How can you have anything without content? Now is the winter of our discontent. Social media. I love social media. I was in Bulgaria because I'm going into business there a few weeks ago. I'm standing in the toilet, shall I? And I'm thinking, and there's a very, very, two very, very, very funny pictures. One is of a girl with a magnifying glass looking down at you, if you're a man. And the other one's one with a tape measure. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling, you know. That's social media. Is there any medium that isn't social? Please tell me. All these things, you know, new invention, new words that people come up with to make it sound important. Next thing, don't change because you're bored. If something works, keep running it until you find something better. Next thing, never copy your competition. Uh, clients love this. I love Sounds are doing great ads. Can we do something like that? No, you idiot. You'll be doing their advertising for them. Don't be obsessed by strap lines. Complete waste of time. 
You know, I, I love the one. That, uh, the same road that I go to see my daughter, I used to go to see them. They had a lot of uh, Toyota things up there. And one year they had the car in front is a Toyota. Not if it's a fucking Mercedes. <laughs> and the next year they had, now the fun begins. I thought, are they running a brothel down there? Yeah. <laughs> Nearly all strap lines are mean. They're very, very few. Just do it. It's great, but very, very few. Don't waste too much time on that kind of thing. Don't assume that business uh, decisions are logical. And this is the percentage of people wanting to physically assault a work colleague in 2008. 41% of the people in Wales wanted to kick somebody to death. 38% in London. 38% in the North East. Only 16% in the South East, I don't know why, but 50% of the over 65s, and I can tell you the over 80s is about 90%. <laughs> don't try to be too original. As Mozart said, I never tried to be original in my life. You don't have to try to be original, you have to be right. If you get it right, then maybe it'll end up original. If you start by trying to be original, the odds of it being right are very, very low indeed. Yeah? Don't assume your prospect is intelligent because either people are stupid or they're stupid when they're reading or watching your stuff because nobody sits down and says, oh, it's an advertisement, I must really concentrate. Yeah? So don't assume your, your prospect is intelligent and don't assume that your prospect is stupid either. It's a very delicate balance, yeah? They're not stupid, but they're not thinking, yeah? Never fail to ask an idiot to look at your stuff for the reason that they're not, people are not thinking. So it's got to be so simple, yeah? Find an idiot, read it out to them, read that. Did you, did you understand that? <laughs> Nor me. Don't invest in the wrong things, more on getting cold leads to reply than converting people already interested. These are commercial things. <laughs> Never fail to guarantee, and make your guarantee as generous as you possibly can. Never fail to fight for reply. Any time I see somebody write something that says, we look forward to hearing you from you, well, fuck off. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Always ask at least three times for a reply. Make it the next thing you do. Do it now while it's fresh in your mind. P.S. Uh, don't forget you get a sound of you. Never ask for the, the reply less than three times, yeah? Because that's why you wrote the bloody thing. You wanted to reply, yeah? And the worst failure of all is the failure to act. The worst failure of all is the failure to act. The, 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 you sit there thinking about it and you don't do it. Here's a good quote from George S. Patton. A, a good plan executed violently now beats a perfect plan next week. Thank you. <laughs>